Welcome to the Hydrolase lesson in this MOOC course. This presentation deals with the application of this family of enzymes for the synthesis of molecules in aqueous and organic media. Therefore, their classification depending on the reaction that they catalyze will be provided highlighting the importance of some representative examples such as lipases, epoxide hydrolases, amidases, and methylases. Hydrolases usually work in aqueous systems because their natural function is the hydrolysis of organic molecules. They receive the EC3 code, and a total of 13 hydrolysis subclasses exist depending on the substrate or bone that undergo the modification. For instance, EC31 enzymes are the most famous ones since they allow the hydrolysis of ester bonds for the formation of the corresponding carboxylic acid and alcohol. However, there are many other good substrates such as sugars, ether, or peptide bonds. Their application in the industrial sector has received great attention, especially proteases and lipases, because they do not need external cofactor addition for their core reduction, thus simplifying the reaction setup and product purification in comparison with, with other enzyme classes. Depending on the hydrolase of choice, they can follow different mechanisms, but many of them follow the serine hydrolase 1 with a histidine, serine, and aspartic acid residues working in an orchestral manner. From the different hydrolases, some of them can be highlighted due to their synthetic application. Ester is lipases for ester hydrolysis, phospholipases for phosphoric acid ester hydrolysis, amylases and glycosidases, extensively be used in sugar chemistry. Epoxide hydrolases able to hydrolyze epoxides forming diols. Peptidases and proteases for amine and peptide hydrolysis. Acylases, amidases, hydantoinases, and lactamases to hydrolyze specific amine bonds. Nitrolases used for the conversion of nitrogen into carboxylic acids. Analog in the halogenases applied in the addition of water to carbon halide bonds. Apart from water, other nucleophiles can be considered when working in organic or neoteric solvent. This is the case of lipases that are surely the most versatile enzymes requiring the formation of an acyl enzyme complex to transform esters into carboxylic acid by using water as nucleophile. From 1985, also alcohols were employed to achieve transterification reaction leading to other esters. More nucleophilic substrates, such as amines, have been used for the formation of amides through aminolysis reactions. Even the simplest amine, that is ammonia, uh, used in aminolysis reaction to form substituted amides. Similarly, hydrazine can be used for the formation of hydrocytes through hydrocinolysis reactions and also perhydrolysis by reaction with hydrogen peroxide. Continuing with lipases, the hydrolysis of ester is here explained that requires normally very mild reaction conditions such as room temperature and short reaction times. These reactions can be run normally in aqueous systems, although an organic solvent can be used to favor the substrate solubility. If this is not good enough, the use of immobilized lipases in organic solvent can be attempted using, in this case, an excess of water as nucleophile. Thus, selective reactions can be run that are especially important when some chirality can be introduced, such as the case of classical and dynamic kinetic resolution of rathamines and the desymmetrization of prokylar or mesocompounds. Interestingly, most of them follow stereoselective rules that allow the prediction of the final product, as it will be later explained. Unfortunately, and as occurs with most of the enzymes, the disaster specificity is narrow, although advances in metagenomics and directed evolution techniques has allowed the discovery of new active and versatile lipases. An empirical rule was predicted by Kathlausas and co-workers to predict the reaction enantium, the reactive enantiomer in lipase catalyzed reactions. Based on the systems of two pockets with different sizes in the surrounding of the catalytic triad, triad of lipases, the faster enantiomer can be better accommodated. For instance, as occurred in the one phenylethyl acetyl hydrolysis, leading to the R alcohol and the remaining S ester. Epoxide hydrolysis adorned interesting hydrolysis, usually employ, employing water for the hydrolytic reopening of the epoxide to form the corresponding diol. 
Different epoxide hydrolysis can be found in nature. Are epoxide hydrolysis acting over the R epoxides? Or alternatively, S epoxide hydrolysis acting over the X epoxides? Depending on the reaction mechanism, the epoxide can be opened by the attack to the less inner carbon atom that is called retention mechanism, or through the most inner carbon atom by an inversion mechanism. Thus, the formation of chiral epoxide and chiral diol is possible. Other interesting hydrolytic enzymes are nitrilases and amidases, which allow the formation of carboxylic acids from nitrile or amides, respectively. The reaction being close related to the nitrilase hydratase chemistry from the Lyes class that allows the selective conversion for nitriles into amines, transformation that has been developed for industrial application in the conversion of acrylonitrile into acrylamide, precursor of different polymers such as polyacrylamide, widely used as thickener and flocculating agent. Reverse synthetic reactions are also possible by immobilizing this catalyst, thus allowing their work in organic solvent for the production of different organic molecules such as esters, amides, hydrothins, and peracids. In this context, we move from homogeneous catalysis in aqua system to heterogeneous catalyst system because now the hydrolysis is in immobilized form. Enzyme immobilization possesses many advantages, such as the improvement of the enzyme stability and activity to be used now in, in non media, the simple recovery of the enzyme by filtration at the end of the process, the enzyme reuse that benefits the final cost of the, the, cost of the process when many reuses can be applied. To achieve the same, many strategies can be used that will be discussed in other units of this MOOC such as weak interactions between the enzyme and the current by absorption and ionic interactions, or covalent links that are stronger, or the formation of cross-linking enzyme aggregates, or finally the treatment of or encapsulation of the enzymes on membrane, methyls, or other compartmentalization systems. Finally, stereoselective acid aspects are considered in this presentation, highlighting three types of reactions. On the one hand, classic kinetic resolutions of racemates that allow the formation of two products with different stereochemistry. For instance, an alcohol and an ester by the acylation of a racemic alcohol. Similarly, the acylation of, ester, uh, of amines with esters leads to the corresponding amides and the remaining amine. To avoid the inherent limitation of 50% yield in the two pure products, the racemization of the slow reacting enantiomer can be considered. For instance, usually a metal complex ideally obtaining then an ester or an amide with 100% yield and in an antipure form. And finally, the disemetrization of prochylar mesocompounds allow the formation of an antipure product in theoretically 100% yield. The application of Kadlauska's rules is also applicable for the acylation of the corresponding secondary alcohols to afford the opposite, enantio, the opposite esters and alcohol enantiomers that can be achieved through hydrolytic reactions. For the modification of alcohols, active esters such as vinyl acetate or isopropanyl acetate are used to reversibly shift the equilibrium by releasing acetaldehyde or acetone, respectively. In the case of amines, non-activated testers such as alkyl ester are preferred to avoid the formation of undesired products such as amines and releasing alcohols that are less nucleophile than amines, so they do not compete with the main acylation reaction. Overall, and summarizing this video, hydrolysis work under mild reaction conditions. For hydrolytic reactions, the aqueous medium preferred, also an organic solvent can be used to solubilize the substrate in these reactions. Advanced on immobilization techniques have allowed the development of hydrolytic reactions in organic solvents, but mostly the development of non-hydrolytic synthetic reactions, being able the performance of chemo, radio, and stereoselective processes. Inside the stereoselective processes, enzyme can catalyze classical kinetic resolutions, dynamic kinetic resolutions, and the symmetrizations. The nucleophile of choice being especially relevant when using lipases for the synthesis of several product families. Outside from the lipase box, the hydrolysis reactions are mainly explored as described with epoxide hydrolysis, amidases, or nitrilases. 
And last but not least, the SASTRI specificity can be improved with metagenomics, bioinformatics, and enzyme evolution studies. Hopefully, this video has provided you some knowledge about the use of hydrolysis for hydrolytic and synthetic reactions. Thank you.